virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we are so grateful to be here in your presence, Father. We pray that as we lift our voices in song, as we celebrate another Sabbath day, Lord, that you will receive us. Now, Father, we pray that we acknowledge your presence already in this room. Bless everything that goes on here today. In the name of Jesus, the whole church said, Amen. Amen. As you remain standing, we are going to ask you to lift with the joy that is in your heart today, and we're going to sing joy to the world. Now, even if there is sadness or if there is even grief, there is always joy in your heart. Hymn number 125. <laughs> Sabbath this is. It's beautiful, thank you. <laughs> it's beautiful because it is the Sabbath day. And it's beautiful because of who we are worshiping today. Now, there are those among us whose names are not on our membership roll because you are visiting with us. And we really would like for you to stand so that we can see you. So would the visitors please stand, and our guests, so we can see you. We want to not miss you. Would you do that now? 
And remain standing. Remain standing just for a few minutes because uh, we don't know why you came. There are, different, there are various reasons why we have visitors. If you are curious and have come to see, if you are weary and have come to rest, if you are grateful and have come to share, if you are hurting and have come for solace, if you are listening and have come to pray, if you are seeking and have come for answers, whatever the case may be, we welcome you today. Now look around you, members, and those that are closest to our, our visitors, please give them a warm welcome today. We thank you for being here. Enjoy this Sabbath and this season, and we know what the reason is. So you uh, members, you may stand, greet one another that are closest to you, and please be sure to greet the guests. Thank you. Have a wonderful Sabbath. your hands together give God the praise the glory I didn't expect y'all to get all over the place but that's all right this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be what everybody be what everybody if you're glad why don't you put your hands together give God some praise this morning I mean if you're really glad to be alive Glad he woke you up this morning. Glad he's brought you through another year. We've got one more Sabbath in this year. We almost made it. Look at somebody tell them we almost made it. Yes, by the grace of God, we're going to cross on over into 
2018. It's good to see each and every one of you, my heavenly father's children. I understand Sister Shamika Robinson is here. I, 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 wait, wait, where are you, Shamika? I know. Wave your hand, wave your hand. Oh, there she is. All right, girl. Come on, put your hands together. Give, give. Yeah, yeah, I got bright lights in my eyes now. God bless you. We thank God for his mercies, his miracles, and how he has continued to touch you and heal you all the way through. We want to thank God for just giving us another opportunity to be in his house one more time and to give him praise, glory, and honor. Just a couple of things that I want to say very quickly. Uh, you know that on the 31st, there are two things that are going to take place. At 4.30 on that Sunday, at 4.30, what time did I say? 4.30 p.m., we're going to have our New Year's Eve prayer service. Is that all right? New Year's Eve prayer service. We ought to thank God for getting us through and for carrying us through. Now, I know that the typical time for crossing over or counting the new year is at midnight. That's what others do, but I'm, we're going biblical. Evening to evening. And so we'll be here just as the sun sets on that evening, and we will ring in the new year as we connect with God on that very special evening. Then later on, you come and get your praise and get your prayer on. Then you'll be ready to go and celebrate. That evening, we have our black tie gala. Uh, I don't see Sister Shepherd, but I'm going to just mention we have our, there she is in the back. We have our black tie gala that takes place that evening at 9 o'clock p.m. until we fall out. Amen. I understand the cost is about 65. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. $65. That's what, that's what I heard. Praise the old God, Jesus. Yes, yes, $65. And we're asking and encouraging you to get your tickets now. Get your tickets now. They're running out. They're running out. So hurry and get your tickets even now. See Sister Shepherd or any one of the members of the, the um, social committee about those tickets. Arlene wants me to give you her love. She's away. She took off this morning to visit with family, and we put her on a plane, and I trust and pray that she has landed safely in Indiana, and I'll join her on tomorrow. Thank you, Pastor Mukorum Bindo, for carrying on on last week. We praise God, and it's always good to be able to leave and know everything's going to be all right. Came back, the church was still standing, the doors were still locked, and nothing was in ashes. Praise God for you, my brother. God bless you and the church at large. Um, we're going to... Do birthdays and anniversaries real quick. Birthdays and anniversaries. Birthdays and anniversaries. Birthdays, you've celebrated a birthday this week. This week, this week. This week. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for them. God bless you. Amen. 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 Some of you rising up like you're not sure you want to celebrate. You ought to thank God for another year. And you ought to stand up, jump, jump right up. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for bringing me through. And so we praise God for what he has done and how he smiled upon you. And we just thank him and we'll pray for you continuously. On the count of three, one, two, three. Happy birthday. Amen. Now, any Christmas weddings? Amen. All right, we just got one couple. Amen. How many years? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I, I'm going to interpret that the right way. <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the, way the way you said it, it kind of gave me question for pause. But we praise God for your 28, thank you Jesus years, and you're smiling and that tells me a whole lot. And so we thank God for your marriage and your happiness and on the count of three, everybody, one, two, three, happy anniversary. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is going to be a three-piece kiss. All right, all right, okay, okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. 
You done kissed for your 2017 anniversary, the 2018 anniversary, the 2019 anniversary. As a, you took them all in that work. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> now I know what thank you Jesus means. Amen. Amen. All right, Sister Mukora, better come right on up. Happy Sabbath, saints. Just a quick announcement for all of my secret sisters. You know who you are. Please see me after service. I have your gifts in the back in the pastor's office. And if you haven't yet been assigned your sis secret sister, please see me. We would love to share this beautiful gift-giving experience with you all. Amen? All righty. See me after service. Thank you so much. God bless. Thirty years ago, church, on Christmas, I would have been calling you and asking you to come on and go with me as we do Christmas carols from one house to another. Anybody remember doing that? Amen. It was indeed a joy. But this past Sabbath, your church, exemplifying its passion for God, went out into the community and distributed Christmas cards. And so I've asked two of the persons who went out and shared in this ministry to come and share with you what their experiences is. And so at this point, I'll bring Sister Evans forward. This is Sister Sonny Evans, for those who don't know. She is our uh, head elder, our first elder. Uh, nonetheless, she was out uh, participating in the ministry. So Sister Sonny, uh, tell us where you went. I went to the Safeway on Alabama and Naylor Road. Okay, and it was you by yourself? No, it was Sylvia Saunders and myself. Okay. Sylvia is on a cruise at this time. Okay, so it was so good for Sister Saunders that she went cruising. Um, so Sister Evans is here to speak about her experience. So Sister Evans, uh, as you were distributing the cards, how, how receptive was the audience? Most of the people were very receptive. There were a couple that uh, did not want the card, um, and I think they thought that I was soliciting something from them. But by and large, the 30 minutes that we were there, the persons accepted the cards, and we wished them Merry Christmas, and they were quite pleasant. Praise God. So 30 minutes, you had an opportunity to impact our community in a positive way, and as you said, you weren't asking you weren't seeking to receive anything. You were just, just distributing a Christmas card. We thank you for your ministry and what you did. Um, Sister Valerie Emerson, or should I say Deaconess Valerie Emerson, also went out to distribute cards. Sister Valerie, where did you go? Um, I went up to the Shoppers Food Warehouse right on uh, Marlboro Pike. Okay, and Sister Val, um, how receptive was the uh, were the people where you went. Very receptive, but I have to say when we first got out and uh, were walking to our position, uh, one person said, are you all Jehovah Witness? Mm. And we said, no, we're from um, DuPont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church. Very good. Uh, church, just as a side note, we're going to get that same impression. When people start seeing us, they're going to ask, are you Seventh-day Adventist? Um, so, Sister Val, you went by yourself or? No, um, had Renee um, and who else? You were there. Ah, praise God, praise God. <laughs> so, uh, we, 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 had an, we had an enjoyable time. Um, Val, was that your first time for distributing cards with the church? Um, no, I've done it each time, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and for Christmas. Praise God. Church family, thanks, Val, so much. Church family, uh, this is just two examples of what we have done uh, this past week. There are going to be many more opportunities for you to become part of our TMI, which stands for Total Membership Involvement. That, uh, uh, that statement did not come from Lamont Bailey. It came from our Seventh-day Adventist uh, the General Conference president, 
he is seeking to have total membership involvement one congregation to another so we dupont park church are going to be involved and engaged in ministry in the new coming year we're going to forget about what what happened in the past and we're going to uh, forge ahead thank you In case you're wondering what they, they're doing, they know what to do, do now. They've been trained well. well.
as we just sang, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever and ever. You know, our Sabbath school lesson this week, um, we studied Romans 12, chapter 12 and, and chapter 13. And in Romans 12, 1, it said, um, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. When he's talking about bodies, he's talking about everything, our mind, everything that, that, that we are, including our monetary sacrifices, which leads us to this point of the service where we return back to the Lord that which is his. A living sacrifice. God wants every part of us, even our financial means, to hasten and further his ministry. So as we prepare to lift this morning's tithes and offerings, understand that God wants all of us, including our financial support. At this time, the officers now will lift this morning's tithe and offering. Let us, let us have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you, dear Lord, that you have blessed us and allowed us to come into this place. I pray that the sacrifices that are put in this plate will go forward to hasten your coming, to further the ministry and hasten your coming. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
three times he cried out to the Lord and said, to God. Three times he stood there in need of prayer. Three times he went to them, watch and pray. Surrounded with the burden and the pain and the weight of sin on his life. Miss White says as he was in the garden of Gethsemane, that a cloud of demonic angels that surrounded him. He called on Peter, James, and John, and they went to sleep. However, the story says that after he had prayed for himself and an angel had encouraged him, his countenance changed. That the sweat and the that sweat that had become like blood had literally gone away that when he was taken they could not tell that he was gone through, going through something I simply want to tell you that there is power in prayer I don't know what you're going through but there's power in prayer I don't know what you're facing right now but there's power in prayer I don't know what your, your situation is like, but all I know is if Jesus had not prayed, that when he went into the closet and he began to pray, that when he started fighting that battle, he won because he had prayed in the closet. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you need, but I want to invite you to pray with me. Whatever you're dealing with in your life, we serve a God who is more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask of thee. Do you need healing in your body? He's able. Do you need financial assistance? He's able. Do you need freedom from demonic encounters? He's able. What do you need? As we sing this song, And we stand to our feet. Talk to God. Because he's able. I want to pray a prayer today. Of covering over your life. That whatever you're going through right now. Towards the end of 2017. Maybe the year was not what you expected it to be. I want to invite you to lay it at the altar. I will. Trust me. What do you need? He said, trust me. Keep, keep singing that. Come on. Never leave. I'll never
Father God, we thank you so much for being the God that you are. It's December 23, 2017, and we've made it thus far. Father, we've made it to another day, another Sabbath, and another moment in life. Father, we recognize not everybody got a moment, got a chance to see this moment, God. Though, God, we're going through so many things in life, we thank you so much for being faithful and just, oh God. Because the reality of the matter is we should have been dead a long time ago, but yet you still saw it fit that we be alive today, oh God. And so, God, we praise you and we thank you for that, God. We thank you for your son who died for us on the cross of Calvary, who laid his life down for our lives. He said, I love you so much because I want you to see another and ha to have another moment. Father, I pray at this moment for this particular church. I pray, God, for our, your particular people, the people who have come to the altar at this moment, the people who are seated in the, in the congregation right now. Father, you know all that is happening and taking place in this congregation, God. Some people need healing, oh God. Healing from the diseases and sicknesses in their body, God. Some people have been dealing with so many situations and illnesses for a long time, and God, and they've been asking, God, heal me, oh God. So God, we're praying that you will perform a miracle today, God. Heal somebody in here who is not believing that you are able to do it. Heal somebody in here who's not believing in you, God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask of you, God. Heal somebody in here, God, who believes that no, they're, they're stuck in their situation and that this is what it is. Let them know that they, the doctors, don't have the final word, but you have the final word. And God, I've come before your throne asking for the pe for peace of mind for some people in here because some of us are dealing with financial issues we are, we don't have peace because we're worried about our bills for next week or tomorrow we're worried about what we're going to eat on tomorrow or next week or next month we're worried about the things of 2018 already god so god give us peace of mind father i'm praying that you build some marriages in here Father, we know you need, we, we know that we need you so much. We need you to help us, help these people, help all of us who are married to continuously love on one another, to show each other a love that is so strong that cannot be bro broken. I pray, God, that you bind the devil when he tries to come between the marriages in this church. I pray, God, that you strengthen the marriages in this place. I pray, God, that you uplift the marriages in this place. And God, I also pray for the men in this church. At the end of 2017, I pray that you would uplift them, God. Father, help us to be men that you called us to be. That, God, we ought to be priests who walk and talk like a priest, God. That when the devil tempts us with things that look good on the outside, Father, help us to walk away, God. Help us to be examples to our younger men, God. Help us to be people who live that which you've called us to be, not just to walk and look like it, but to live in our hearts. A priesthood heart. To lead our families in how you would have us to lead them. God, I pray for the women in this church. That God, you will continue to strengthen them. That you will love on them and let them know that they are still loved by you. Father, I pray that you would give them a sweet aroma of your spirit, God. That no matter what they do, wherever they walk, people see the presence of God in their lives. Father, I pray for those who've experienced death in their lives. For Brother Harold, God. For those who are experiencing pain right now. Father, I'm asking that you will comfort them. I'm asking that you will send your spirit that you promised us. That God let them know that death does not have the final word. That on that beautiful day when you shall come back again. I'm praying God for these particular persons who have come to get a healing. Amen. Father, I don't know what they need. Amen. But you know. Yeah. I don't know what they need. But you know. Yeah. And so God, I'm asking in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. That that which I did not say the Spirit will continue to pray on. And we thank you, God, for your communion, for your Son who died for us. This glorious, symbolic communion that we get to participate in because He died. And so, God, forgive us for our sins. 
our shortcomings. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May your blood wash us and make us whole again. May we be as white as snow. And God, we pray for the preacher. I ask that you bless him. Bless the word that you've given him. We ask God in the mighty name of Jesus that you bless this church and the leadership. Always continuously reign your spirit and guide us in all that we do and say, this is my prayer, that you will encourage the people and let them know that you will always fight their battles, that you will never leave them, that you are here, God. Help us to trust you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. I would like to call upon this time Dwayne Cole to come up at this moment. Dwayne. Can we put our hands together for Dwayne? Dwayne, we want to especially recognize you and honor you for all that you, your decision to join and serve with the deacon board, junior deacons, am I saying? And on behalf of the church, the senior pastor and I, we would like to present to you this certificate. I'm going to read it to you. It says, from this day forth, may you, by the words of 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, don't let anybody look down on you because you are young. But set an example for believers in your speech, in your conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This certificate of achievement is presented to Dwayne Cole, who has demonstrated a desire to serve the Lord the Christian character and full of dedication to the junior deacon ministry on this day, the second 23rd day of December 2017 at DuPont Park, Seventh-day Adventist Church, is publicly acknowledged as the junior deacon. Church, will you say amen? Amen. 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 We're proud of you, and we pray that God will bless you even in this. Amen. been a long time since we've had testimony. Have you missed it? Well, it's back again. And you know the way we do it. We sing a song together and then we hear the testimony. And the song we're going to sing today is Hymn 99. We're going to use those hymnals in front of you. God will take care of you. The pastor mentioned my favorite word, and that is trust. Trusting God. God will take care of you.
you're going to hear a testimony that I've been waiting for you all to hear for two years. Two years ago. This person's favorite hymn is, How Great Is Our God. And you're going to hear just how great he is. Barry, will you come forward, please? Amen. 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 I want to applaud the pastors and thank the pastors for setting a time in the service for Christians to share their testimonies of how God has blessed them. We're strengthened by our faith, we're strengthening our faith, and we increase each other's faith when we share how good God has been to us. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understandings, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I truly believe God allows us to face situations that we cannot get out of by ourselves. So in these situations, or these situations increase our faith by allowing him to make a way out of no way. In my case, it was special healing. So my testimony, I went to the doctor every year and got a blood test. It showed that I was healthy as a horse with not one area outside a recommended range. I donated blood regularly and had given up to a quart of blood, and of course not all at the same time. Um, American Red Cross, they sent me an email and said that my blood was so clean that I could have given it to babies. I was exercising regularly, I was going on long challenging bike rides with Lamont Bailey and David Starks that lasted hours. I mention all this to say that there were zero signs of me being sick. Now as Sherry and I aged, both of our doctors insisted that we get a colonoscopy. Sherry did not want to get put to sleep, so she signed us, for, signed us up for virtual physical on Veterans Day, November 15th, November 11th, 2015. Now virtual physical, for those who don't know, it's a full body scan that scans the heart, and lungs, and other internal organs, and even does a virtual colonoscopy all in about 15 minutes with not, without having been put to sleep. Now I agreed to go along because I was having problems with my stomach and I was hoping they would find a cause. After the scan, we sat down with the radi radiologist and he went over our results. To make a long story short, he said that I had a mass inside my kidney the size of a baseball. So I'm thinking, oh my goodness. So I froze and thought, this cannot be happening to me. I must be dreaming. He showed me the scan of my other kidney and to give me an idea how big kidneys should be, but my other kidney was twice as big as the good kidney. He recommended I make an appointment with John Hopkins to have it taken care of. When we left his office, I still was in shock. So blessing number one, if, I had, if we had a regular kidney like the doctor had recommended, we never would have found a mass because colonoscopy would not have found the, the kidney, I mean the, the mass in the kidney. So praise the Lord for that. So about a week later, the radiologist called our house to check to see if we had made an appointment with John Hopkins. I told him I made an appointment, but the next available appointment was about a month away. And he said, no, 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 you need to call now because this is an emergency. So I wasn't taking it that seriously, but I called and got another appointment. And I met with the director of urology in, of, of the radi residency program at John Hopkins. He looked at my scan and said that this mass is most likely cancerous, and given the size, he's gonna to have to take the entire kidney. I was like, oh my goodness. So to reiterate, I mean, he even reiterated that I needed to have the surgery as soon as possible. So we scheduled the surgery to be in the next two weeks. And again, I left his office in shock. So blessing number two, I connected with a specialist, a doctor who teaches other doctors how to take care of this kidney problem, this kidney cancer, in the best hospital, who was in the best hospital in the world. Johns Hopkins, we all know, is the best hop hospital year after year as one of the best hospitals in the United States, and of course, the United States has the best hospitals in the world. So God put me in the hand of a qualified surgeon. So here I am facing this impossible situation and I cannot get out of by, out of by myself. So I trusted that God would keep his promise that he had made in the Bible. This was definitely a faith, a faith testing ordeal, 
So I claim God promises in Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. One of God's many names is Jehovah Raphi, God who heals. Also in 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their lands. So yes, it was my body, but I claim that, that he would also heal my body. So given the trial that I was about to face, Sherry and I prayed. Now pray the Lord for a praying, praying wife. I called my mother and father, and they prayed. And praise the Lord for a praying mother. My mother is a praying mother. I put a request, a prayer request in DuPont Park's prayer line. Um, the elders were praying. The deacons were praying. My Sabbath school class was praying. I asked my cousins to pray. I called friends from a photo shoot from another church and asked them to pray. My neighbor was praying. Sherry's coworkers were praying. And my Maryland cruise buddies were also praying. So God made a lot of promises in the Bible. Another promise that he makes in James, 15, in James 5, 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So God heard the prayer of these hosts of people that were praying for me, praise the Lord. So blessing number three, I believe and know God answers prayers. I knew I needed much prayer from many people, so I put down my needs to keep my business to myself, and how most of us are. No, I'm not going to tell anybody about what's going on, but I put down that, that, that I don't know, closed feeling that some of us have and asked the prayer warders that I knew to call out my name to God and ask them to heal me. And um, part of blessing, yes, I was blessed to have so many people praying for me. And blessing number four, we have a friend who lives about 20 minutes from John Hopkins. So we spent the night before surgery at their house versus having to drive about an hour and a half um, right before surgery. So that was another blessing. I praise God even in the little things. Um, blessing number five, surgery was, was a complete success. Doctors said the, com the cancer was completely contained in the kidney. Amen. Amen. Completely contained. There were no signs of the kidney, uh, any, uh, any signs of the cancer outside the kidney. Praise the Lord. Blessing number six, I went back for a test a year later in January 2016, and again, there were no signs of cancer. It had not spread, and it, I did not need chemo, I did not need radiation. I've seen what that does to people, and I was like, praise God, I don't have to deal with that. So I thank the Lord every day the way that he has saved me from the cancer and was able to con contain it, and that we were able, I was able to find the the kidney or the cancer early in my, in my kidney. So there are several things I would like you to take away from my testimony. First, trust in God with all your heart. Pray to him in the good times and in the bad times. Number two, go to the doctors and get your routine exams. Take your medicine, eat right, get exercise, drink plenty of water, and get enough sleep. Number three, know that God is in control. And four, as we've talked about earlier, is push, pray until something happens. Our faith is strengthened by our testimonies and hearing other people's testimonies. Number five, read the Bible and claim, that God's prom claim God's promises because we are a witness, I am a witness, that God keeps his promises. Number six, witness to others about how God has blessed you. He blessed you so you can tell someone else how good God is. And number seven, if you don't know how good God is, ask somebody. So, as part of asking somebody, I have here, if God has blessed you in some way, I want you to raise your hands. So, there's a lot of testimonies out there. We should be telling each other about the goodness of the Lord. So keep telling your story, keep telling other God, others how good God is. Again, I say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct thy, thy path. How great is our God. Amen. We're not going to sing the last verse. I just want to say it to you. No matter what may be your test, 
God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Are you trusting? Let the church say amen again. Thank you, Brother Barry, for sharing and inspiring. Somebody ought to be inspired today and believe that miracles are still available. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's go to the cross. Let's go to the cross. Sing to him with me. Jesus keep me near that old cross. There's a prayer. the cross. Sing that chorus one more time in the cross.
nothing in my hand I bring but to the cross I cling once again oh God let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight for you are my God my strength and my redeemer touch our hearts we pray in Jesus' mighty and holy name, let everyone say amen and amen. Turn with me as you remain standing in your Bibles. The Old Testament, New Testament, I'm sorry, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. We want to begin with verse 12. We're just going to read two verses, verse 12 and 14. Hebrews chapter 10. If you have it, say amen. amen. Hebrews 10, chapter 10, verse 12 and verse 14. Reading together these words are there recorded. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Verse 14, for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. For just a few moments today, I want to speak with you on the subject, the blood still works. Turn to somebody and tell them the blood still works. You may be seated. We are high in our Christmas season. And in fact, it is about to come to a quick and abrupt halt. It is a busy season, a season that's filled with going and coming, buying and wrapping, decorating and festivities galore. It is the retail merchant's heaven. This is their time of the year to make sure that the year is successful. In fact, it is said that most of those who are in the retail business make their money during the Christmas season. It is alleged that we will spend billions of dollars buying stuff for one another. And for some of us, we're just buying stuff for ourselves. But I'm here to tell you that with all the stuff that's being bought, by the time the end of January or by the time January itself rolls around, most of what was bought will not work anymore. In fact, it will be of no use. How many of you still have stuff that you bought or were given at Christmas time from three years ago? How many of you have stuff that was given to you just two years ago? And I dare ask if you have stuff that still works that was given to you just one year ago. In fact, all you have to do is wait for Jan uh, 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 December 26th and you'll find out how much stuff doesn't work. For Walmart, Kmart, Target, Macy's, and all the malls will be filled with long lines of people returning stuff that didn't work on December 25. You will look outside on garbage day, and there is stuff that was just bought a week ago will be piled up outside because after Christmas Day, it didn't work anymore. Most of the stuff we buy has a life expectancy. It's got a shelf life that it will only last for so long. I get perturbed when I go to certain stores, especially when I buy electronics and I bring my electronic product to the desk to pay for it. And before they ring it up, they ask me, do I want a warranty? That says to me, you expect this thing to break by the time I get it home. That disturbs me. In fact, I'm ready to take the thing 
everything, put it back on the shelf, because if I've got to buy a warranty before I even open the package, then maybe I shouldn't buy it in the first place. Somebody better get on the stick and deal with this thing. I'm sick and tired of my, my smartphone getting dumb after two years, right at the time when I finish paying my contract. I'm getting sick of stuff wearing out before I'm tired of using it. I think it ought to be a mandate that the stuff should work until I say it shouldn't work anymore. I'm looking for a phone that'll charge one time and you don't have to charge it anymore. I'm sick and tired of stuff that's not reliable, that's not working, that may work today, but tomorrow you just give it a little time, it's going to wear out, it's going to fall apart, it's going to get a glitch, a hitch, something will go wrong. With all the stuff, you can go to your bedroom, you can go to your closet. Your closet's probably filled with stuff that doesn't work anymore. In our lives, we're filled with stuff, relationships that don't work anymore, uh, electronics that don't work anymore, televisions that don't work anymore, jobs that don't work for us anymore, life situations that just don't work for us anymore. We've got too much stuff that doesn't work. But I'm here to tell you today on this blessed Sabbath morning that when it comes to salvation, when it comes to the grace of God, when it comes to the power of the promise of the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you that if you've got Jesus, he is all that you need. When you have Jesus, he died for us once and for all. And so in a very quick, short way, I want to tell you that the power of grace through the shed blood of Jesus the Messiah is still available for sinners today and brothers and sisters it's still effective and if I say it just in a very short way I just want to tell you today that the blood still works you might be able to find some stuff that works in fact I'm told that there's a light bulb somewhere in California Livermore California that has been shining for 100 and 11 years. Nobody knows why the light bulb still works, but it's still glowing bright. There's a man by the name of Harry Cox who has a vacuum cleaner that was built in 1904 that still cleans his carpets and works better than any Hoover or Dyson turbo machine. They tell me there's a steam powered car that is noted as one of the old oldest cars in the world. It was built in 1884 and just a couple of years ago in Hershey, Pennsylvania, it was auctioned off for four point six million dollars. That's good news and I'm glad to hear about it but I guarantee you because man made it because it's temporal one day the light bulb will go out. One day that vacuum cleaner won't pick up anymore and one day that steam car will no longer produce motion. But when it comes to God you can count on him. You can trust him. You can bank on him. He is steadfast, sure, and forever. In fact, somebody said he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He, Jesus Christ, came as the promised babe wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger as the Messiah, the promised Messiah. He came to sacrifice himself one time. Hebrews 9 and 28 says, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. He came one time to do the work that was needed for salvation. This was in contrast to the daily sacrifices of the priests who had to kill unblemished lambs day 
after day, the community of the Hebrews knew that at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, they had to produce a lamb to cover the sins of the day. Day in, day out. A new lamb had to be sacrificed. A new lamb had to be slaughtered. And at some point, somebody's got to ask the question, how many lambs will it take to make sure that all of our sins are washed away? And unless you've got an unlimited supply of lambs, there's got to be the notion that one day, you're going to have a day full of sins and no lamb to sacrifice. But the good news, my brother, Brothers and sisters, is this. We don't have to worry about the lamb, the blood of lambs. We have the lamb of God. He was slain from the foundation of the world. He died. He died once and for all. What he did one time on the cross was enough to cover our sins throughout the ceaseless ages. What Christ did, what Christ does is powerful enough to keep us covered in grace. I'm glad to know that what Christ did is not like hair color. What Christ did is not like a perm. What Christ did is not like a curl. What Christ did is not like Grecian formula. What Christ did is not like a weave. What Christ did is not like braids or twists. Whether you color your hair, perm it, curl it, Grecian formula, put a weave in or braids, one day soon some new growth is going to show up. And you're going to have to get your weave redone and your color are redone and your braids redone and the and the twists have to be put back together. New growth shows up and new gray hair shows up. You trying to cover it up and you've got to go back again and again and again. It ain't nothing like seeing somebody who needs a new perm or a new weave because what they had looks like a hot mess. Sometimes in our lives we've got new Growth called sin. We tried to cover it up. We thought we had mastered it, but it keeps coming back. Y'all getting quiet right now, but I know right here and now in this place, we've got stuff that we're fighting with, stuff that we're wrestling with, stuff that we're agonizing with, and we need God's grace to cover us. Paul says in Romans 7, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold as a slave unto sin, for I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my flesh, for I do not do the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil that I do not want to do. There's something about humanity. You can get your life together and the Holy Ghost can have you bound up. You're walking the path and things are running smooth. Then all of a sudden, stuff will hit you out of nowhere and you declare to God, Lord, I ain't going to cuss no more. And somebody cuts you off in traffic and cussing becomes your day. You decided I'm not going to drink that no more. But you get stressed out and find an old bottle that was hid in a closet somewhere. You said I wasn't going there anymore. But you find yourself there late one, one night wondering how in the world did you get in this predicament. There is stuff that comes up in our lives that we try to hold down. We try to push down. We try to push it away. We want the old man to stay dead but every now and then the old man has a way of resurrecting itself. I'm here to declare to you today that we've got some secret private worlds of sin that we struggle with every day and God wants to crack 
the door in your secret world and cleanse you from all righteousness. He sent me by today to let you know that not just on the outside, but on the inside, in your secret world, the blood still works. Whatever you're dealing with, God's got enough grace and enough power to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. For hear him in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The blood works because it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Hear Hebrews 10 once again say, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. The blood of Christ is effective. What did I say? The blood of Christ is effective. It is the power. It is the authority to blot out all iniquity. Hear me clearly. There is nothing in your life that the blood cannot cover. There is no sin that you can commit that the blood cannot cover. There is no length of or depth of sin that you can go. That grace is not powerful enough to redeem your soul. First John 1 and 7 says, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If I were to sit down right now, that should have been enough for you to say, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for the grace of God. That says that there is nothing that you have taken to God that anybody can bring back up to bring you down. If you've taken it to Christ, if it's covered by his blood, the Bible tells me it's cast into the other depths of the sea and God remembers it no more. Your memory might be long, but it's your memory that I'm not worried about. I'm worried about what God sees and what God knows and what God holds important. And he declares that the blood of Jesus wipes all my sins away. It's effective. It's powerful. It has the ability and the authority to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Here's the other good news. It is a powerful and available not just now, but forever. Ah, that's good news for me. Because you see, brothers and sisters, if I were on a clock or on a ration, I would have run out of grace a long time ago. But because there is grace to be, uh, uh, that is available for all of my sins, as long as I need it, I can come back to the fountain again and again. Ephesians 2 and 13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. It is available for as long as we need it. I'm glad the blood of Christ is not like Slick 50. Slick 50 was an oil additive that I used several years ago under the understanding that when you use Slick 50, you didn't have to use car oil anymore. Put it in one time, 
and your car will run forever. In fact, the advertisement was that a car was drained of all its oil. They put Slick 50 in it, and the car ran without oil. I said, that's a pretty good product. Let me try it. So I put it in, took all the oil out, put the Slick 50 in, and things began to run pretty smooth until one day I'm coming from the church after a meeting for evangelism, and my Slick 50 gave out. I heard a thump, and then I heard a clank, and smoke belched out the back. I had blown my engine fooling around with Slick 50. But when it comes to the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, it is not based on some empty promise. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. The blood still works. There by the grace of God, when I look around, go on. But because the blood works, every thief and liar can be born again. Because the blood still works, every batterer and abuser can be redeemed by the grace of God. Because the blood works, every addict, whether cocaine, opioid, marijuana, alcohol, sex, of gambling can be restored and made brand new because the blood works in every soul that has been that has experienced what it means to be broken you can have a new life in Jesus Christ because the blood works somebody was able to say amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Because the blood works, grace is amazing. Because the blood works, burdens are lifted. Because the blood works, it banishes all shame and removes all guilt. Because the blood works, it makes the unlovely lovable. Because the blood works, the mean become sweet. The angry become glad. It sets the captives free. It restores the lost. Because the blood works, hearts that are broken are healed and life that was lost is brought back to restoration because the blood works I can ask the question would you be free from the burden of sin there's power in the blood power in the blood would you or evil a victory win there's wonderful power in the blood there's power power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. And though he died some 2,000 years ago, he still forgives. He still restores. He still uplifts. He still overcomes. He still renews. He still gives us power. He still gives us life. He still picks us up. He he still turns us around. He still gives us grace and more grace and more grace and more grace. Why? Because the blood still works. And I'm glad about that. Because if you don't need it, I need the blood. The table that we are now we will now approach reminds us that the promise was given that Jesus the Christ would come to be our sacrifice that we would not have to die but live through him he declares as often as you do this do it in remembrance of me and remember that the blood 
still works. We would like to invite the people who are upstairs on the balcony to please come down so that we can serve you. So if you're seated upstairs, we'd like you to come down to the main floor so we can serve you. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23 and 24 says, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. We praise you, O Lord, as we prepare to break bread together in remembrance of your broken body. May we continue to be reminded that because of you bearing our sins, we can look forward to the joy of eternal life. In this we pray and are grateful. Amen.
Has anyone been overlooked? Jesus took the bread, the unleavened bread, signaling the bittersweet experience of the Exodus. Now, the bittersweet experience of grace being provided for us. He took it, broke it, gave it to them and said, eat, this is my body, eat all of it. the same manner he took also the cup after the supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me loving father we come to you for thanksgiving because the bible says the wages of sin is death and we all deserve to die, but for Jesus. Jesus was willing to shed his blood that I might live. And as we partake of this wine, the symbol of his blood, may we never forget it's because of the blood that we can live. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I feel like saying that one more time. I know it was the blood. Well, I know. I know it was. Has anyone been overlooked? day when I was lost, surely he died on that cross. And if I don't know anything else, I knew it was the blood that saved me. He took the cup filled with the unfermented juice, unfermented juice, unfermented juice of the vine representing the pure, precious, spotless, sinless blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, this is the cup of the New Testament. This represents my blood, which is shed for you. Drink all of it. Amen. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. For he has reminded us once again that we have been redeemed. Come on, come on, choir. We need just a little bit more of that, just a little bit more. He's coming back. He's coming back, isn't he? He's coming back. He said, I will not participate in this meal until I do this with you in the earth made new. I know he's coming. I know he's kind for me, Lord. Well, one day when I was lost, I know he died upon the cross, and you know it. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Well, I know it. I know it was. Why don't you stand to your feet? We want to do that just one more time. Brothers and sisters, 
I'm looking forward to the time when we shall celebrate with Jesus Christ face to face. I want to be there, don't you? I've got a father sleeping in the grave that I want to see him one more time because my Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with them and to be with him in the air and there we shall forever be. And Jesus Christ himself will be the celebrated officiant. I'm looking forward to it. And if you're looking forward to it, you need to turn to somebody and tell them, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Come on, Josepha. Give us one more, Josepha. I'm going to have to get in them headphones. <laughs> As we get ready for the benediction, I want to remind you that the deacons will be standing at the door collecting the offering to give to those to further help and fund those who are in need. Now may the Lord God bless you and keep you. The Lord God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The God who rolled that stone away, who's alive here today, keep you cause his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace until the next time we see each other again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Y'all hug somebody and tell them Merry Christmas.